Today I'm going to show you how to build and assemble a Raspberry Pi 3 with a 7 inch touchscreen display which I'm going to use as a dashboard in my MX-5 race car. Now let's get straight into this. These Raspberry Pis, they're pretty versatile little things and uh, for today we're going to use it for something a little bit different, a digital dash in a car. So. Uh, obviously, the, obviously the parts you need, you need your Raspberry Pi, you'll need a micro SD card, I've got a 64 gig, and the 7 inch touchscreen display. These are all genuine Raspberry Pi products I bought from RS Components. I found that the uh, pricing from RS was the most competitive. Anyway, how about we get these things out of the box and have a look at exactly what we've got. Now right off the bat you can see the Raspberry Pi is a pretty tiny unit. Uh, if you're not familiar with these things, they're like a mini PC powered off of a 5 volt USB source. They've got uh, Wi-Fi, Ethernet connection, USB ports, HDMI ports, really clever little fellas. Uh, and of course they run off a, a micro SD card as you can see here. But we'll set that aside and let's bust out the screen. Now these Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen displays, they're around $150 pretty clever piece of kit as well. Uh, they allow the Raspberry Pi to mount directly to the back of them and they've got all the bits and pieces built in to make the, uh, the touch and everything work right out of the box which is a really nice feature. The unit does come with a couple of cables and things which are obviously necessary to connect it to the Raspberry Pi itself. There is of course the little ribbon cable for all the data and then of course the power cables. And that is your Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen display. So, before we go and assemble things, we first need to get the SD card loaded with the Raspberry Pi OS. I've got the typical uh, micro SD to normal SD card adapter, and then this weird pink USB port thing, which uh, allows me to plug it all into my computer. Now, onto the PC, and you want to head to raspberrypi.org slash downloads. From there, you click on the noobs link, that'll bring you to two options for download. You've either got Noobs or Noobs Lite. Basically, the difference between the two is uh, nothing. The actual OS that gets installed is the same. It's just that Noobs Lite is a uh, lightweight download and then you uh, download the full OS as you install it onto the Pi. I opted for the uh, full Noobs installer because it's just easier to download it all now and load it all on the SD card now and then, and then not have to worry about downloading it again later on the Pi itself. So you can go ahead and download your choice of OS and then once the file is downloaded you need to open up a folder to your SD card, open up the zip that you've uh, downloaded and extract all of the contents from that file onto the root of the SD card. We can now set that all aside and get back to the assembly of the actual physical unit. Now that we're back over to our Raspberry Pi we can insert the SD card into the slot Set that aside because we first need to run the uh, display ribbon cable into the screen itself. Carefully clip that in place and then push the little securing tab to make sure that's secured down. I'll then run in the uh, four power jumper leads that go from the screen into the Pi. And I'll put a graphic up on the screen now showing you uh, the orientation in which they go. Please note that this is for a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, I think the earlier Pis use a different sort of uh, jumper configuration. Then with those all in place, I can now take the screws out of the back of the screen, lay the Pi over the top with the port to accept the uh, ribbon cable on the same side as the ribbon cable on the screen, and then I can screw it down. Now you really don't need to screw the thing down super tight, uh, just make sure it's firm. Uh, obviously these are fairly lightweight PCBs and they're only small screws, you don't want to damage anything or uh, strip any screw heads or any of that silly stuff. And of course, with the Pi screwed down, we can now cable it all up as well. So we'll start off with the ribbon cable coming out of the display that loops over and clips into the uh, connector on the Pi itself. Uh, again, it's one of these sort of slightly unusual little clips that you need to uh, disconnect on the, on the Pi, push the cable in and then uh, secure the clip down and you've got your ribbon cable set. And then of course, it's just a matter of finishing off the jumper cables from the screen into the Pi itself. Uh, again, I'll put a graphic up showing exactly how these go, just in case you can't work it out. Again, this is for a Raspberry Pi 3, 
any earlier Raspberry Pis may use a different jumper configuration. And with the Pi screwed down and all the jumpers done, that is fundamentally the assembly completed. You can see here the uh, two micro USB connectors, one on the screen and one on the Pi itself. Uh, it doesn't actually matter which you use to power up the uh, the two devices because the power sources are jumped between the two. As long as one of these two micro USBs is getting a uh, sufficient 5 volt USB power source, you're going to power up both the Pi and the screen with the one connector. So we can get to powering this thing up and we'll see if we can load up an operating system. They do require a bit of power, probably at least a 2 amp power source. Uh, otherwise you're going to get the little lightning bolt as you can probably see on my screen here. As far as I can tell, it's not the end of the world. The thing may just run a little slow, but you really do want to make sure it's getting the power it demands to make sure that you know nothing gets damaged, I suppose. Uh, as soon as the cable's plugged in and uh, power is fed through the cable, the thing will boot up and it will automatically try and load from the SD card the uh, OS installer. Um, you'll see here that we've got two options and uh, immediately it pops up with a a Wi-Fi connection prompt, uh, which is a really clever feature. At this point, you'll need to have some sort of keyboard and or mouse plugged into your Raspberry Pi to be able to control the thing. Uh, in my case, I'm going to enter in my Wi-Fi password. It'll connect to the internet and load a bunch of OSs from the web. Uh, however, because we've already downloaded the noobs Raspbian OS, I'm going to select that as my choice. There are other options here for things like um, using Xbox media centers and that sort of stuff. Uh, but in this case, we're using Raspberry and, and we'll let that go ahead and install itself. And after roughly half an hour, the OS builds itself, installs itself, and we get a little successfully installed prompt. And as we hit OK, the thing reboots itself and loads into a desktop, more or less like you would expect from any other OS. And now from here, the first thing I'm going to do is load up the web browser, do a uh, Google search for Tuna Studio, although it actually uses uh, DuckDuckGo, not Google. Uh, but anyway, from the Tuna Studio website, we'll scroll down to Downloads and download the uh, Tuna Studio version for Mac, Linux, Unix. Um, take note, I'm downloading version 3.0.28. Although pretty much the installation process for any version is going to be more or less the same. Uh, take care here not to download the Windows version, that's not going to work here. From our downloads folder we can now extract the uh, Tuna Studio zip file. And in the folder we've now got a whole bunch of files. The one that's of most importance is the tunastudio.sh. Uh, by opening that up and clicking execute, Tuna Studio will launch to life. Now, if you're not familiar with Tuna Studio, it's the uh, application that's required to tune a Megasquirt ECU. They're pretty common things for uh, MX5s, like the car I'm putting this uh, dashboard into. And uh, it's a very powerful tuning software, and it also allows me to run some pretty clever dashboards for a live data display on everything that's happening under the bonnet. From this point, everything's fairly straightforward. You can now do all your typical Tuna Studio functions as you would expect from your normal Windows laptop or whatever you use. However, there are a few little tweaks that I'm going to do. Uh, first of all, I'm going to set this thing to run in dash only mode. Uh, that will require a restart of Tuna Studio. And then I'm going to set up the uh, OS to auto launch Tuna Studio when the OS boots up. Now I did have one slightly unusual quirk here when trying to type the tilde key. Uh, didn't seem to want to come out from pressing the keyboard. I had to go into the keyboard settings in the OS and change my keyboard layout to Australia English and then it was perfectly fine and I could type the tilde, no worries. So we're changing to cd tilde.config slash alex session slash alex de dash pi and we're going to edit the auto start file to add in the location of our tunastudio.sh script. By putting that in this file, it will auto load when the OS boots up. And now if we give the OS a reboot, you can see Tunis Studio launches to life right on startup. A few other little visual tweaks I'm going to do here include removing the uh, toolbar when it's not required and uh, giving us a sort of full screen view of everything, which is a handy little trick. And the last thing of course you can do is play with things like your desktop backgrounds. You can go and set them to whatever you want, just like you can on a uh, Windows PC and that sort of thing. You can see here there's a bunch of built-in options, but of course you could download an image from the web or copy one over from your PC or whatever you want to do. 
Um, that's totally up to you. Now one last thing I did want to mention, if you wanted a convenient way to control your uh, Raspberry Pi, I installed TeamViewer on my Pi by simply uh, Google searching TeamViewer Raspberry Pi, browsing to the uh, Raspberry Pi website and scrolling down until I could find TeamViewer host for the Raspberry Pi. Once that download was completed, I installed the TeamViewer app, logged in with my account and I'm able to easily remotely connect to the Pi from my desktop PC or even your mobile phone. And then with a few little tweaks, playing with some dash files and mounting this thing in my car, the end result is pretty awesome. We've got a dash running in the car connected to my ECU and displaying all sorts of engine information. Well anyway folks, that's the build and assembly and setup of the Raspberry Pi with the 7 inch touchscreen display to run the Tuner Studio in dashboard form. I hope you found the video useful and it's helped you set up your Raspberry Pi without too much fuss. If you did find the video useful, why not help me out by hitting the like button down below and if you'd like to see the video on how I set this up in my race car, check out my other videos on the channel. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, we'll see you next time.